CataractCoach.com compilation video, the Sulcus IOL. We all end up using Sulcus IOLs for tough cases, so come on, learn my tricks here. So here's a case open posterior capsule. Notice how we inject the viscoelastic while we remove the IA probe. Do not let the AC collapse. Do not let vitreous prolapse. Anterior hyaluronic face is intact. Here comes the sulcus lens. So a sulcus lens in the US for sure is a three piece lens. We don't have any sulcus designed IOL, so we use a three piece lens. So here comes the leading haptic. Notice it goes out in the correct orientation. In this case, let's deliver the entire IOL on top of the iris first. Now look at a haptic orientation. It should look like an anti-S, correct? So that leading haptic looks pretty good. That trailing haptic needs to be flipped over a little bit. And now, there you go. Once the lens is there on top of the iris, now we can carefully dial it into position. So the sulcus is the gap between the back of the iris, the posterior surface of the iris, and the anterior capsular rim. So if we place the lens there, Remember, it's going to sit a little bit more anterior to its normal position that's in the bag. So here you go. you got the whole lens now is sitting more anterior. So we should adjust its lens power. Now, I can do a trick like this, which is dial it into the bag, and then maybe I can opt to capture it. We'll talk about that as well. That'll change its power too. So the first thing we want to understand is how do you calculate sulcus lens power? That's the rule of nines. Yes, the rule of nine is an easy way of remembering this. Look at the picture here. If the IOL power is zero to nine, there is no change in the lens power from going from bag to sulcus. Nine to 18, subtract a half diopter. 18 to 27, subtract one diopter. That rare case that's above 27 diopters, subtract one and a half diopters from the IOL power. Now that's considering you understand the A constants. In other words, if you're calculating out what's my normal in the bag power, let's say it's 20 diopters for an in the bag placement of a lens with an A constant of 119.2. Well, now, if you switch to a sulcus lens that has an A constant of 118.7, already you have to subtract half diopter. So in that case, the three piece lens in the bag would be 19.5, but in the sulcus would be 19.0. Now, here's a lens that's been delivered, that's a three piece lens. And look what we're doing here. We're capturing the optic. In other words, the haptics are in the sulcus, but the optic is pushed posteriorly behind the anterior capsular axis. So now technically, the IOL haptics, yes, are in the sulcus, but the optic is, quote, in the bag because it's behind the posterior capsular axis, I mean, the anterior capsular axis. So because this optic is now more posterior, in fact, the same as in the bag, the IO power is in the bag as well. So just change for the A constant, but you don't have to use the rule of nines. Now, sometimes you gotta open your incision. Remember, your sulcus lens may require a bigger incision than your standard single piece acrylic that you went in the bag, right? So here's a bigger incision. Now we'll deliver that lens. Again, three-piece lens. It's an acrylic lens. And we can get that in the eye very carefully. And a good easy step if you're a beginner is place it on top of the iris to begin with as the bubble's out of the eye. And now with the lens on top of the iris, now you can carefully dial it in the sulcus. So make sure those haptics don't go too far posterior. You want them in the sulcus. You want them between the anterior capsule rim and the back surface of the iris. Now don't get optic capture. If you're not gonna push the optic behind the rexus, make sure you bring the pupil down with some constricting uh, medications. Let's look at another case here. Here's a case, look carefully. Whoa, Zeiler dehiscence a lot. Now the capsule is intact, the posterior capsule, but there's a lot of Zeiler dehiscence for this traumatic cataract. So what should we do here? Well, first thing is, let's place a CTR in the eye, a capsular tension ring. Take your time here, this is a resident operating. If a resident can do this, you can do it too, it's not that hard. But let's get that CTR in the capsular bag, that'll help give us a lot more support. Now what are the options here? You could put a single piece of acrylic lens in the bag. You could have put a three piece in the bag, but you know what's even more support and more long-term stability is this. Watch carefully. Three piece IOL, gonna go in the eye. Look at the haptics. The anti-S orientation is correct. And let's keep the haptics in the sulcus. We're gonna push the optic behind the rexus. So like a button through a buttonhole on your dress shirt, 
we're going to capture this optic into position, and that's going to give an incredible degree of stability. Just think about it. The CTR is inside an intact capsular bag, helping to push outwards on that area of zonular loss or weakness. This IOL is going to be a three-piece with the haptix and the sulcus, and the optic captured behind that intact, beautiful 5 millimeter rexus. And again, this is a resident case. This surgeon has done maybe 100 cataracts. You can do this, I assure you. Hold yourself to a higher standard. Remember, cataract coach taught you. You compete with yourself, not with anyone else. Now, here you go, tucking that optic under that rexus. Now you know why it's so important to make that good rexus at the beginning of the case. This is incredible long-term stability. This IOL will be good for the rest of the patient's life. Let's move on. Next case. Here we go. We've got another resident who's operating. Three-piece lens going in. Let's watch carefully. There's the leading haptic coming out correctly. Remember the orientation, the anti-S. So that first haptic looks like the number seven. And the trailing haptic better look like the capital letter L. That's the 7L rule. By the way, all these original videos are on cataractcoach.com. I know you like the compilation video. I know you like to watch it on YouTube. But you'll actually get a lot more out of it if you watch it on cataractcoach.com. But hey, whatever makes you happy. So there's the lens. We're going to get it in. There's that trailing haptic, correct orientation. Get it gently dialed on the sulcus. Now, sometimes it's helpful to put a little bit of viscoelastic, put a little dollop of cohesive viscoelastic to help open up that sulcus. And be very cautious here, dialing this around. This resin is doing a good job. That lens looks pretty good. So remember, if the lens optic stays in the sulcus, use the sulcus power. That's the rule of nines after you change the A content. If, however, you're going to do this reverse or these optic capture, so haptics in the sulcus, optic behind the rexus, then you're going to use the in the bag power. All you got to do is change for the A constant. Now, watch this here. Lens going in the capsular bag? No, 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 no. Lens going in the sulcus. So let's put that haptic on top of the iris again, dialing it into position. And we're going to show you what we're going to do now. Optic capture, maybe. A little more viscoelastic going in. Dialing that lens around. Now be careful. When you have a case like this, you may already have an open posterior capsule. You may have a tendency for vitreous or prolapse. You've got to be super careful about that. And you dial that lens in. Now, do you need a peripheral iridotomy? You know, the classic teaching is you do not need a peripheral iridotomy in a patient with a sulcus IOL. Now, can you put one in? Hey, whatever makes you happy. Sure, why not? I don't think it'll hurt to put one in, especially if it's nice and small. But the classic te teaching is that you do not need it. But what do you need? You got a case like this with an open posterior capsule? Do yourself a favor. Put in the 10 nylon. Close the incision. The problem is if you get this incision to gape or, or open up or you lose IOP or the AC shells in the post op period, you know what happens? The, vis the vitreous comes around the edge of the IOL. The IOL comes out of the sulcus. You see the patient the next morning with optic capture. Now, what's this picture show you? This is a bad mistake. That's a single piece acrylic lens in the sulcus. Please, I beg you, do not ever put a single piece of acrylic lens in the sulcus. It's not meant to go there. Translumination defect, UGH syndrome, sunsetting lens. In fact, if you put a single piece of acrylic lens in the sulcus, I'm going to unsubscribe you from cataractcoach.com videos. Now, here's the last important pearl. Look at that lens coming out. It looks great, right? 7L rule. First haptic looks like the number 7. That looks good. Let's dial that into position. Nice and easy. It's going in the bag. Not even a sulcus lens there. But I'm showing you this video for a reason. Watch this now. So same thing, sulcus lens, right? Or three-piece lens. Let's load it up. Grabbing that lens. Coating it in viscoelastic. Nice and gentle here. Using those fancy forceps. Putting it down the plunger here. Down the cartridge. What happens though? Sometimes when you place these lenses. Ooh, ultra high my 1.0 diopters. Sometimes when you place these lenses in the cartridge, they twist on you. Not your fault. That's just the nature of this. But you've got to be aware when it comes out of the cartridge into the eye that you, oh, look at that. You flip that orientation. You saw that haptic the wrong way. Now look, it's not coming out like a number seven. So twist the whole injector, rotate it upside down. 
Make sure, there it is, the number seven. Leading habit comes out in the correct orientation. Now, twist your hand back over in the other direction and let's get this lens in appropriately. So make sure you never put the lens in the eye upside down. So thanks for watching the Salkas IOL compilation. Thanks for watching these videos. Be sure to check out the website too, cataractcoach.com. You'll get the full text and the graphics and the photos plus the videos. And if you sign up for a free daily email, we'll send all of that to you in your inbox every day for free. Come on. CataractCoach.com. Check it out.